Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another training session. It is fantastic having you back. Thank you for joining me again today and I hope that you are learning quite a bit. Please feel free to reach out with any questions you may have. You may send me a text message directly. Uh, you may text our main phone number or send me an email. It's entirely up to you, but please don't feel alone. Please let uh, please know that you can reach out. Uh, I am here for you and I would love to support you. So let's get started and let me just get myself out the way here. And today we are going to be discussing retaining ESL students. Now this is huge. This is pretty, pretty big. Um, and it is one of the most important things of the entire of every single semester uh, or trimester at Bright Academy. We are not funded by the government. We uh, do not have any local type of partnerships. Such things do not exist in the Dominican Republic. So we are alone. We're in this together, but we're alone. So retaining our ESL students is a pretty big deal so that we can uh, continue to operate. So uh, to cover this training session, I've come up with three questions that I would like to answer uh, to convey over how we should retain uh, these ESL students or what will work to retain the ESL students. Very important three questions that we should keep in mind. Now, why do students stop studying? Why is it that students stop studying? And that is our first question. So when retaining students, it's not just about the student, it's not just about the teacher. Many components come into to play. But given that Bright Academy is doing everything that we can do to provide the best learning experience for the student. And you as the teacher, let's say you are doing your very best uh, and the student is doing his or her very best. Why is it that in the end students stop studying? Why? Why, why could that be? So don't forget the age of your students. Let's start with that. Why do students stop studying? And don't forget the age of your students. Why is this important? Well, we have to keep in mind that students in ESL classrooms are going to come with many things that those K-12 students come with, which is a bunch of problems, but to add to this big old problem uh, in, the, in the ESL classroom is the fact that you are going to have teenagers. Uh, you're going to have younger kids in the uh, eight, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten year olds. Uh, you're going to have adults. You're going to have senior citizens in your class. So don't forget the age of your students so that you don't um, discourage them from continual learning. If you are just going to run your class 100% in technology, you will not be meeting uh, the needs of those senior citizens that perhaps are not too tech savvy. So we have to uh, keep a, a happy medium in our classes. And that is one of the main reasons why students stop studying. They don't feel a part of the classroom. So again, why do students stop studying? And many times they don't feel part of the classroom. Uh, they don't feel that they're, they're problems because in the end, even if they're grownups, they don't feel that their problems are being addressed, whether that's their, uh, they need to learn English really fast to keep a job, or whether that's um, my mom is forcing me to be here, uh, problem, or any other personal issue going on outside of the classroom. We need to uh, remain uh, empathetic uh, of what's happening 
to our students and how we can help. Now, we cannot do much on a very personal side, but we can do a lot by making sure that they feel comfortable in the classroom. And that can be as simple as not forgetting the age uh, group or age range that you have in your class. Um, the class is not challenging enough. This is a big one. Now, we do our very best in the administrative side to place students where they belong and we have uh, a test that they take uh, and it will show them their level and it's according to our books. So we have a test uh, specific for our program. So if a student comes in saying, oh, I'm a B1, well, you're gonna have to prove to us that you're a B1 and that's not done with just an interview. I'm not just going to go up to the student and say, hello, how are you? And if you can respond back to me, I'm gonna place to be one class. It doesn't work that way. They take a specific level up exam created by DK Education. So when the material is not challenging enough, what should the teacher do? Because sometimes students get, um, get a little bit um, intimidated by exams and they don't do, they don't perform as well. And uh, trust me, I'm a believer, I, I don't believe in exams uh, as the final evaluation. Uh, however, I do believe that they give us some light. So uh, what can the teacher do if the class is not challenging for one or two students? Well, you have the power to go up to the office and say, hey, uh, Jimmy Joe is, you know, doing very well. I don't think that the class that he's in right now, the A1 level, should be the level where he should be at. Jimmy Joe should try A2 for a more challenging uh, task. And we will do everything in our power to go ahead and, and, and level him up per your recommendation. Uh, no questions asked, but this has to take place uh, within the first week. So the first week in your calendar of lessons, you are going to notice that it says uh, evaluate your students, get to know them, speak to them, see where they're at. If you have a student that can have a full-blown conversation and they're in the A1 class, they shouldn't be there. You should be uh, advancing them, leveling, leveling them up to the next level. So please make sure that you keep that in mind. Now, again, uh, more on the why do students stop studying and some tips of um, how we can go and help them uh, or how we can take control of our class to ensure that they don't stop studying because of us as a teacher or us as their educator. Uh, let them stop studying because the academy failed to do something administrative or let them stop studying because they couldn't just return to class. Uh, but don't let the students stop studying because you uh, didn't try as a teacher to keep them in your classroom. So here are some tips. Don't let your experience get to your classes. Now, if you're a seasoned teacher uh, or there's still some green left in you, please know that uh, ESL teaching and K-12 teaching is not the same. Remember that with when you're teaching for a K-12 school, the student has to be there. But ESL students going to a private academy do not have to be there. But in order for all of us to, to, to keep our jobs, we need to make sure that we are doing our very best. So don't let your experience get to you. And what, what do I mean by this? Many times senior teachers or seasoned teachers um, forget that some students need motivation. Now, some of these teachers, what they will do is that they will just go into the classroom and just open straight to the book. And that is boring here in the Dominican Republic, in the United States, in Argentina, and all the way uh, to China. That is just boring. So. Engage your students in games, share a story, make connections, tell a joke. Just don't come in every day and open up to page 13, exercise 5, we're going to go over the homework. That is just insanely boring. It sounds even boring and annoying for me to say it. 
use post-it notes. Post-it notes are a fantastic resource. Have students share how they're feeling at that moment so that you get an idea of the mood for the rest of the class. Or ask a random question. Stop in the middle of a lesson, pass out sticky notes, and just ask a random question. And watch, your kids are gonna laugh, your students are gonna laugh. Uh, you are going to laugh because what your eight-year-old student is saying is going to be different, very, very different than what your 55-year-old um, student has to say. So those are experiences that make this job uh, worthwhile. Now, look at the person to the right uh, or to your left. Now, to the right, right, to the left. Now, it's great to see you today. What if we just exercise that in the classroom? What if we just look to our right, look to our left, and tell our students, let that person know that it's great to see them today? Or what was your favorite part of class today? And then hear what they have to say. Give them the chance to speak. Now, I, I'm saying shh here, where these activities do not have to be related to your class or to the lesson. They don't have to be. They can just be a spin on the class, right? Uh, let's spice things up and let's just throw something out there completely unrelated so that I can get my students' attention, so that they can laugh, so that they can get the desire of returning to class back again uh, next Tuesday. Uh, or next Thursday, next Wednesday, next Monday, etc. Uh, make students move and get up. Now, there's nothing better for an ESL class than having your students move, get up, uh, whether that's dancing, whether that's just uh, focusing on, a, on an exercise. It could be passing out the blank piece of paper. That's my favorite. I think that's, that's my number one activity. Just getting a blank piece of paper, completely blank, like this one, or it could be this big, depending on your class size, and just passing it, giving it to somebody, and then you begin timing them. You can play music. It could be like musical chairs, and your students need to write something, and the next student has to continue on writing. The next one has to continue on writing to try to come up with a uh, piece of uh, <laughs> written work that makes sense. Now, remember, your students are all in different levels. They are going to have a blast trying to understand, trying to rush, trying to look at you for when you're going to tell them to change uh, or move on to the next person. I love this activity, and it can easily turn into an entire lesson. Trust and believe. It can turn into an entire session uh, teaching session that is when uh, when you do it now you can adjust it for a1 you can adjust it for c2 it is entirely up to you and up to however uh, many levels you would like to level it up by keep the class relatable and interesting now this is part of building relationships with your students if you have an engineer in your class make sure that you throw in there something about engineering what when you're teaching if you have a student that's in elementary school you know throw something in there uh, if you have a doctor a nurse uh, a teacher um, whoever you have in your class, make sure that you're keeping them in mind so that they know that you heard them, so that they know that when you ask them, what do you do for a living? Uh, or why are you here? What are your English learning goals? So that they don't feel that they wasted their time when they answer these questions that you ask them. News and world events are awesome for classroom exercises, classroom lessons. Uh, you can very quickly just share community news, uh, world events, and these can very quickly spark the interest of your students. Debates take a little bit of planning, but they are fantastic. Students love debating, and it's great for you to uh, turn this into a speaking lesson where you are just going to mediate and help uh, with pronunciation or grammar. Moving on to the second question, retaining ESL students. How am I doing as a teacher? And oh my goodness, this is a big one. Now, one of the most important things and humbling things uh, about uh, teaching is that we have to keep ourselves up to date. We have to love what we do. And asking ourselves, 
or self-evaluating uh, um, is very important. How am I doing as a teacher? Now, how often do you ask yourself this question? Let's begin there. How often do you ask yourself this question? How am I doing as a teacher? If you are not asking yourself this on a weekly basis after you teach at least two classes per week, something is wrong. Something is wrong. And I've been teaching for over 15 years already. And I can tell you that that's not a lot of years. But if you are not asking yourself that question, then something is wrong and you need to change things up. This is not a question that you will ask your students directly. I don't want you to go out there and survey your students. I don't want you to go out there and say, hey, guys, here's a survey. Rate my class. Rate me as your teacher. No. Students are all going to have different opinions. Some will like you. Some will hate you. Some will love you to death. But we cannot please everybody. But what we can do is do our best. And that is and that doing our best begins with asking ourselves, how am I doing as a teacher? To put this into perspective, um, when you just walk into a class, students can, can, can sense that. Students know when you come in with an activity. Students know when you're the teacher that just walks in with a book and open up and here's the board and that is what we're going to do and class is over. Students know when you are that excited teacher that really wants to come in and teach them English, that really wants them to succeed. And it begins by asking yourself that self-evaluating question. How am I doing as a teacher? Now, what can you do to help yourself um, with this evaluation? Observe other teachers. Go and watch what other teachers are doing. Uh, go come in on a day that you're not working and you have some time. Uh, uh, maybe if your students are on break, go to the next classroom and see what that teacher is doing. That maybe you can learn something from them. Go and speak to the front desk. Go and... Uh, Talk to uh, the director uh, if, if, if I'm around. <laughs> uh, go and speak to whoever's there that has experience teaching. Talk to your students. Say, are you enjoying class? Do you have any questions? You know, uh, simple, simple things uh, uh, as such can help uh, you answer how am I doing as a teacher. Now, uh, reception knows a lot probably more than I know, because now severe things get escalated to me. But reception knows a lot. Reception welcomes the students, dismisses the students. They go in to buy their snacks in there. They sit there. They have a conference room right next to them. Many students wait there. They come in to, for tutoring sessions. Reception is getting all the tea. They're getting all the information uh, from students. So you might go in and just be careful. You have to have some thick skin and say, hey, you know, what What, what are my students saying? Do they like class? Uh, are they excited to come in? Uh, have they told you that they want a little bit more of this, less than that? Now, be prepared for the answer because reception knows a lot. Now, there's also something that I love exercising when I was teaching K-12 and when I taught ESL. And uh, that's the teacher report card. And I will always give out a report card for the students to um, fill out a report card for the teacher, for myself, um, when their report cards were coming out. If I'm here giving you a grade, I want a grade from you too. So again, it requires thick skin. I would have to go home and, and open up the beer to make sure that I could read what the students had to say because some students can be brutal, but this would help me uh, tweak my lessons. And I remember that one of, the, one of the, the best pieces of feedback I've ever received from a student was when I was teaching history. And uh, one of my students wrote in the report card, um, you know, I love Mr. Perez, uh, great class, great information. Uh, and then one of the questions was, you know, any feedback, anything that can be improved? And they wrote, your PowerPoints are boring. 
And I said, oh my goodness, my PowerPoints are boring. It takes me hours to create the PowerPoints. So what did I do? Oh, I took that personal. That hurt me. That hurt me. And I went in there and I learned how to use Canva. I went in there and I YouTubed, you know, with effects and whatever into PowerPoints and how to insert moving images or GIFs, whatever, because I'm not too tech savvy. And I started creating um, better PowerPoints. And my students were like, whoa, what happened? Very exciting moment for me. And I would have never known. I would have never known because I was all about the material, not about the visuals. And visuals are also important. Now, am I letting my experience get to me? Now, let's go back to that. I would like to, to touch up on this again. Now, how do I know if I'm letting my experience get to me? Well, let's start with, are you lesson planning? Now, you don't need a five-page lesson plan, but are you at least opening up your book or going into the calendar of lessons and reviewing what you have to do? Because if you're not, you're letting your experience get to you. When was the last time you planned an activity, an amazing activity, or even just an activity for your students? If this happened four classes ago, it's time to step up and plan another one. Now, are you exercising or are you taking advantage of pop quizzes and exit tickets so that you know what you need to review for the next class? In collaboration, are you the teacher that just come in, comes in and leaves? Or are you the teacher that comes in and is a team player and wants to know if everybody's doing okay? Uh, what, is, what is the A1 teacher doing? What is the B1 teacher doing? What is the B2 teacher doing? What is the conversation teacher doing? Let's exercise all these uh, suggestions so that we don't let our experience get to us. It's happened to me where I say, I'm too tired. I am not going to, I'm not going to plan no activity today. We're just going to the book work. Now, remember, we are used to going in and teaching, but our students have to drive a long way. Some have to walk. Some have to uh, rush out of work to make it to class. We better make it meaningful because teaching is like selling. Don't forget that. And just showing up is not enough. And our last question, are my classes engaging enough? Are my classes engaging enough? Now, this is huge when retaining ESL students. Now, who's doing the talking? An ESL classroom should be loud. It should be loud. Students should be talking in English. Students should be uh, conversing. They should be asking questions. They should be shouting answers. Because that is what ESL is about. Now, it shouldn't just be you lecturing. It should not just be the teacher lecture after explanation, after lecture, after lecture. That is not how ESL works. You have to let the students do the talking. You're there to monitor. Are your students asking questions? Let me tell you right now, if you taught a class and students only ask two questions, they are not motivated. Time to change something up. Did your students rush out of class? I was huge on this one. If my students rushed out of class, that is the biggest red light. Your students should not want to close their books. They should not want to go home. They should want to stay there with you learning because they're eager to learn English, they're paying, and they have you, a native speaker, or an advanced uh, uh, teacher teaching them what they want to know, what they need to know, what's going to help them. Body language is important. Body language is one of the biggest things in an ESL classroom. You have to be an approachable teacher. You have to use your hands. You have to move around. You kind of have to make a fool of yourself so that students can approach you, even the, the, the older students. Now, did your students get a break? Now, I've taken a sip of my coffee during this lecture uh, 
maybe three times already. Four with that one. Now, students need a break, and you need a break. So let your students go on their 10-minute break so that they can uh, breathe some fresh air, use the restroom, and come back ready to learn. You need your water break. You need your coffee break. You need to make a phone call. Use this break for yourself to reset as well. But just don't rush through all the material and then send them home because they're going to want to rush out your class, and that is not a good thing. I would like to once again thank you for joining me for this training session. I hope it was rich and that you learned. Uh, once again, I invite you to send me your questions should you have 